children and anyone who has grandchildren can tell you what a blessing they are in your life and we are especially blessed that we have a very close relationship with our grandchildren because they're in our house five days a week eight nine hours a day so we have a very close relationship with them so close that they don't really want to go home they really like it at our house and they don't want to go home so that when either one of their parents comes to get them usually there's a battle trying to get them out of our house a few weeks ago my son came to pick them up and when he got there he sat down to visit with his dad and I as he often does and we were having conversation and our older grandchild Emerson came and asked if she could have a cup of ice cream her father said yes she could have ice cream but if she was going to have ice cream then he would go get Jackson so he could have ice cream also well when Jackson saw his father coming he assumed it was time to leave and he didn't want to go so he grabbed his blanket ran to the toy room took a header into a tent that we have set up in there and started to scream and cry at the top of his lungs don't want to go don't want to go and scream and cry and carry on over and over and over he couldn't hear what Charlie was trying to say to him he couldn't hear as his father knelt before the tent what he was saying to him he couldn't hear his father's words so he didn't know that his father had something good for him he just continued to drown out his father's voice with his screaming and crying and carrying on well finally my son got is full of fill of that and my son has a very commanding voice and presence and he said to his son be quiet and come out of the tent well that's all it took and Jackson pouting got a hold of his blanket and came out of the tent to find that his father had ice cream for him you see as long as Jackson sat in that tent screaming and crying and drowning out the voice of his father he was trapped in that tent by his fear of what he thought was going to happen he couldn't receive what his father had for him how about us how about us what tent do we sit in what tent are we sitting in currently screaming and carrying on crying out whether it's from fear or anger resentment unforgiveness because we think we know what's going on because we aren't getting what we want because we aren't being delivered from what we want to be delivered from and the whole time we're screaming in our tent are we drowning out the voice of our father not able to hear what he has for us could Jesus be saying to us today be quiet and come out <clears throat> in the gospel lesson for today Jesus goes into a synagogue and he has been invited to teach that was not unusual when a visiting rabbi or teacher came into a synagogue they were often invited to teach and Jesus begins to teach the people and they are amazed at his teaching because he's not teaching the way the rabbis and the scholars of the day did you see they always taught Old Testament laws and traditions they quickly saw and heard that there was something different about the way Jesus taught something anointed about the way Jesus taught and they were amazed but the people were not the only ones who realized there was something different about the way Jesus taught who is this man is this a different teaching there was a man there possessed by an evil spirit a demon if you will and that demon quickly recognized who Jesus was isn't it interesting that the people questioned 
the demon knew immediately who Jesus was. And he begins to shriek and cry and call out, What do you want with us, Jesus? Are you here to destroy us? The demon knows the power of Jesus. The demon knows Jesus has the authority to order him out of the man. To order the evil out of the man. And he continues, to, it seems as though he's in Jesus' face just screaming and crying out. And Jesus says, be quiet and come out. And the demon leaves the man. And everyone is amazed. Everyone is amazed at the power and the authority that Jesus has, that even the demons obey him. How about us? We may not have an actual demon living inside of us. But we do have a battle that goes on for each of us day in and day out, and it is the battle between the spirit and the flesh. We live in these flesh and blood bodies, and often we get those tapes going in our heads about what we think is right and wrong and what should be and shouldn't be, and we allow the unforgiveness, the anger, the jealousy, to spin around inside of us and in our hearts. And we cry out and scream out while we are being held captive in our tents of fear and anger and resentment. And the whole time, the Spirit of God who lives in us is trying to speak to us. But often, that voice is overpowered by all of our crying out as we are trapped in whatever tent is holding us. Could Jesus be saying, be quiet and come out? There was an elementary school teacher who played this game of sorts with her class every year, and it was called Noisy and Silent. And she would allow the class to make as much noise as they wanted to for a period of time. And that was followed by silence. Well, you can imagine, if you know elementary school age children, or frankly, kids of any age, when given the chance to make noise, they made some noise. There was stomping and screaming and pounding and yelling, and it went on and on and on and on so loud it was deafening. And the teacher would allow that to go on for a time, and then she called them to silence. And in that time of silence, they were instructed to pick up their pencils and write about it. Some profound writings came out of that class during the times of silence. As one young boy wrote, silence is like a tree lifting its branches to the sun. And as it raises its branches to the sun, it soaks up comfort and warmth and love and peace. How about us? How about us? If in those times when we're caught in our tents and trapped by the tent that is holding us and filling us with mindsets, strongholds, attitudes that are leading us to cry out and scream, what if we sought God? What if in those times we went to the Bible and we sought God in his word? What if we sought him in prayer? What if we listened to him in music, gathered in worship, talked to other Christians? What if we were able to be quiet and know that God is God? And he's got it all right in the palm of his hand. He knows the beginning from the end. He's holding it. He is in control. What if in those times we could be quiet and then stretch our spirits to the sun? 
S-O-N. Stretch our spirits to the sun and receive what he has for us. Love and peace and comfort, words of forgiveness and mercy. What if we could stretch our spirits and then come out of our tent and receive what he has for us? Peace, joy, mercy. This is the challenge for the church today. This is the takeaway for today. To come out of our tents. Seek God. Stop the screaming and the crying and the carrying on. Stop allowing our tent to hold us captive, whatever your tent is, and come out. Come out and receive the peace, the healing, the love that Jesus has for us. Come out. Here's the good news. We worship a God who is merciful and loving, forgiving, and we worship a God who has the power and authority to drive any demon out of us, any evil spirit out of us, anything that is causing us to sit in a tent and cry and scream, he has the power to drive it out if we seek him. Surrender to him. And then come out of the tent and receive what he has for us. He is almighty God. And he has that authority and that power. I know I have some tents, plural, <laughs> that I am called to come out of. How about you? What are your tents? What are you being called to step out of? To be quiet and come out. Please rise. And join together for the hymn of the day, number 393.